Serbia, I guess. The public face is essentially dominated by uh, the op-ed pieces and the surveys. It depends on what one expects of IPS as a public institution. So far, if the ambition, initial ambition was to provide some kind of independent thinking about public policies in different areas, there isn't much evidence of that. I, I was in the group that had a long, I think one whole year of conversation on the monthly basis with Kishore as the chair when uh, then Prime Minister Go Chok Tong was thinking of setting up IPS and I think there are 20 of us. During that time we had very wide-ranging discussion it was hard to remember now. Since then, I think my impression, I mean, is that the public contact with uh, IPS is largely through the essay or to the op-ed pieces written by uh, various people at the IPS on the survey reports. There are some regular features like post-election surveys and and then, of course, the annual perspective conference. That, I think, is the, lot, the main impression now because a lot of the other works, I mean, some of the more closed-door participations, meetings and so on, discussions, uh, doesn't quite, I mean, it's basically just in-house kind of work. I always have a question as to how much influence it, there really is on the word policy. I mean, it's like there's a data collection, there's some analysis about general trends, and I realize that many of the research, maybe our surveys, are actually uh, funded by government ministries. I guess how much of that work is inputted in public policy is unclear and unknown, I suppose, uh, to public. The government the ministerial policy work is not ex public knowledge, so it's difficult to say what is the impact of IPS through its work. A lot of the other work I, with corporations and so on uh, is by membership only, so it's like one doesn't really know what is happening. If the ambition, initial ambition was to provide some kind of independent thinking about public policies in different areas, there isn't much evidence of that. I think that it's excessive dependent on government funding really doesn't help to project an independence of the institution. I think that on issues that are pretty close to government interests rather than generating independent uh, interests as such. It's kind of hard to say because I think that even the SR Northern lecture series so far has been, I suppose in a way it is defined as always talking about promote, promoting alternative or I mean projection of a future except for Wang Gangwu's lecture. Well, with recently historical and humanities directed. What is there to improve? Uh, I suppose it would be helpful, I think, for the institution to gain greater credibility if it was to project itself a little bit more independently and uh, deal with some of the issues of greater concern that is not directly related to, not just often or reactive, 
kind of research surveys, but generate some topics that it comes up of its own. I think a projection of doing work that is not merely supplementary to government interests, I suppose. But given its dependency on funding, I'm not sure how that's even possible.